just say, anybody that doesn't vote Labour, I would advise them to vote one of the Remain parties. Oh, yes, it's stop. What a stupid thing. Absolutely stupid thing. And, I mean, it just proves the man only wants to be Prime Minister, even if it's for a day, and he'll never make it. But I hope he never does. Yeah, but that's, that's playing fun in politics. Underhand fun in politics. That's an idiot, absolutely. But a lot of them... Look, there's a huge amount of scaremongering that's going on from parts of the establishment who are looking for any excuse to stop this or to delay it. Now, the instruction of the people wasn't leave subject to a deal, it was leave. Leave. It's not, it wasn't even Brexit, it's actually worse than remaining in the European Union. I want a clean, proper Brexit, All right, let's be very clean. clear. What we need is leadership that is prepared to either negotiate a good deal or walk away. No deal, no problem, no money, we save the time, billion, we spend it back in the UK. Garbage in equals garbage out with these economic models. There's a wonderful opportunity, as long as we leave the customs union, because that's crucial. We can then have a free port, and free ports generate thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs. If we have no deal, we're not going to pay 39 billion, unless our negotiators are incredibly weak, and that actually really concentrates the minds of the European Union, because if they haven't got 39 billion of our money, they are past. Oh, come on. Let's be clear. We all know in business that no deal is better than a bad deal. Of course it's true. Every business person knows that, and this is the the worst deal ever in history to pay 39 billion pounds for nothing guaranteed in return. Please welcome to the stage Richard Tice. not even lunchtime yet. Fantastic. Welcome Brexiteers. It's fantastic to be here in the Yorkshire and Humber region and here at the Featherstone Working Men's Club, standing room only. Literally, there's barely enough room for us to get in. Fantastic. Thank you for coming and sparing your time with us. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Richard Tice, uh, and, and my day job, which has sort of slightly now become the night job, is that I'm an entrepreneur, businessman. I've been involved in running businesses small, medium, and large. And yes, I used to be, for some time, a member of the, the Conservative Party. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes. Do you know, I knew I'd get a really big boo that time. Um, but I did see the light and accepted the invitation to be the chairman of the new Brexit Party uh, a few weeks ago. And my word, haven't we been busy? Uh, it's less than five weeks. Um, feels a bit longer, I must say. We've been quite busy, but uh, less than five weeks since we launched and we've had you know such a fantastic response um, and some really encouraging polls you know there's definitely something going on there's a real sense of enthusiasm a grassroots sort of groundswell of 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 feeling that you know enough is enough democracy is being betrayed in this country and we must not let it stand so um We love a bit of technology and social media and, and, and films, so hopefully we can watch the launch video on the screen. If we all have works. been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit Party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit Party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hardworking, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit Party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit Party now. We can do so much better. 
than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party and the Brexit Party needs you. He's on better form than ever, as you'll hear a bit later. Um, uh, he really is. And, uh, you know, we all know that this current situation is extraordinary. This great, proud, robust nation of ours, this incredible country, we've been humiliated, utterly humiliated by incompetent leaders, incapable negotiators, and MPs that are looking to do dirty, dodgy, backroom deals that are a complete and utter sellout of what they promised in their 2017 manifestos. And we are not going to stand for it. And that's why we launched. So it is an absolute disgrace. So uh, we've got to stop it. We've got to take on the vested interests of the establishment. We've got to take on the big multinationals and their lobbying groups like the CBI. We've got to take on the incompetence, the duplicity of the civil service. All these things need reforming so that actually the country is run properly by competent, capable people who can manage our economy, manage our country for the people because we've been so let down. And our country, we know we deserve so much better. And the Brexit Party, we stand very simply for simple, competent, capable, common sense politics. Because that's what will make a difference. We're doing well on the IT. Um, uh, that's what will make a difference. We've got to take on these vested interests. And we've got some great speakers, uh, our candidates from the Yorkshire and the Humber region this morning. Uh, and you'll hear from them in a few minutes. Because what we're hearing from people up and down the country is a very clear message that actually the appetite for change you know, has never been stronger. The opportunity for change has never been greater. And that's what the Brexit Party stands for. We know with the quality of people that we've got, people that have never previously stood for public office, have said, actually, enough's enough. I'm going to do something about it. Now, is anybody here not a registered supporter? And that's a tough question. I'll ask it the other way around. Most of us, hopefully, are registered supporters. Hands up those who are registered supporters. That's a great showing. There's one or two of you still thinking about it. Waiting for my pension to come in. Waiting for the pension to come in. <laughs> That's an excellent response. Hopefully we'll be high up on your list for the following week. Um, but please spread the word because it is vital that everybody, all of us, all your friends, your family, your friends of friends, spread the word. Never before has it been more important to vote in these elections. We've got to send a very clear message back to Westminster. Leave means... Leave. I'm hard of hearing. Leave means... Leave. Thank you very much. We're just warming up. Um, it really is vital because we all know that Brexit is a huge opportunity. And yet we're the only party that is selling it as such. It's an opportunity to be embraced with enthusiasm, with optimism, with ambition. The opportunity to renew the regions, invest in the regions so that we can grow our economy faster, smarter, more wisely. All of these things are possible with confidence, with belief, with leadership. Not something that's very prevalent at the moment. Um, so we need to send that very clear message back to Westminster and we need to send it on the 23rd of May with a huge resounding vote for the Brexit party because we stand very clearly for a WTO Brexit. Yeah. And if we win and we win well, then that should absolutely knock on the head all this nonsense about a second referendum. And not only do we stand for a second referendum, ladies and gentlemen, but we are making it very clear that we want our elected MEPs to play a significant role in the future negotiating team. There is nothing more clear than to have our elected representatives 
with a direct current mandate from the people to go and sort this out. Westminster have had their go, they made a complete shambles of it, and we've had enough. Do we believe in Britain, ladies and gentlemen? Yes! Do we believe in democracy? Yes! Excellent, we're all on the same side. Good. Um, so to my first speaker, uh, who uh, has been involved in businesses for, for many, many years, and uh, he ended up being a Director General of the British Chambers of Commerce, and he had the cheek when he was supposed to recommend to vote Remain, he actually stood up and he said actually uh, at their conference he said you know what we should leave and uh, as a result over that weekend he was fired from his job <laughs> huge courage but it's a classic case of the establishment saying you've done the wrong thing you're out um, he's been a passionate campaigner for uh, the leave cause ever since he was co-chair with me is co-chair with me of the cross-party campaign group leave means leave and it's fantastic to have John uh, he's Yorkshire through and through to have him as the uh, the candidate uh, for this region the lead candidate for this region please welcome to the stage John Longworth <laughs> to reduce the cost of living and give people more There may be a problem in terms of parliamentary numbers, but the British people voted for Brexit. And the Conservative Party will suffer very badly for letting the British people down and actually breaking their own commitments in the manifesto. Please welcome to the stage, John Longworth. <laughs> Speak like the mic. No. No? 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 Alright, I'll use the mic then. We'll see how we go on. Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me now? Yeah. Fantastic. Is it horrible to see yourself on TV? <laughs> Great to see you all here today. Thank you very much for coming along. You know, it's about democracy and it's about the system of government in Britain, isn't it? Yes. It's not just about Brexit, important as that is, it's a now about democracy. And when I resigned from the British Chambers of Commerce in March 2016 to fight for the Leave campaign, I knew the establishment would fight equally hard to stop us from leaving. And they told such lies during that campaign. But even afterwards I carried on fighting, because I wrote an article in March 2016 in the Evening Standard saying that the establishment are vicious in pursuit of their own narrow vested interests. And so they have proved to be. Yeah. And do you know, we didn't just win by half a dozen votes, did we, that referendum? 1.4 million votes. <coughs> Two thirds of the con parliamentary constituencies of the UK voted to leave. Three quarters, three quarters of the parliamentary constituencies in England and Wales. If leave had been a party in a general election, that would have been a landslide victory. Yeah. And yet, the Liberal Anti-Democratic Party, <laughs> whose leader was a European official, and whom we trusted with tuition fees, have done everything possible since that referendum to stop us from leaving. And the two major parties put in their manifestos during their election campaign that we were going to leave and that we would leave the customs union and the single market and the European Court of Justice jurisdiction and they said that they would vote for Article 50, which they did. And they actually put in English law that we were going to actually leave. We now know that the Labour Party is for the few and not the many. Yeah. We know that because they support a customs union, yeah. which is a tax on everything that we buy every week, on children's clothes, on food, 
on TVs, on footwear. We pay more every single week for those goods because we're in the European Customs Union to protect rich landowners and multinationals. You couldn't make it up. And not only those in Britain, but those abroad. Rich landowners in France and manufacturers in Germany. And that's what the Labour Party supports. You could not make it up. And we know the Conservative Party are the epitome of the establishment. They're for having a slice of a larger EU cake, but a diminishing cake. So an ever larger slice, and to hell with the people. What we need now is to say we support the Brexit Party because it's the Brexit Party that's going to change politics in the UK and it's only the Brexit Party that can get us out of the European Union. The fact is when we leave and I can tell you this because I've had some of the top positions in corporate Britain in the Confederation of British Industry by the way and the British Chambers as I mentioned I can tell you with certainty that if we leave on world trade terms if we leave without a deal we will very soon be much richer and Britain will boom and not only that it will be places like Yorkshire and the Humber it will be the regions of Britain that really benefit from this so let's support the Brexit party let's tell them again and let's get out of the European Union thank you <laughs> has done sterling work for the cause and it's fantastic to have him as, uh, as a candidate. And so to our, our second speaker, uh, again someone who's lived in uh, the region for over 20 years, uh, been in Beverly for many years, uh, he's been campaigning uh, He's been campaigning for, for many years as a researcher, working on policy against the European Union, but also that actually our taxpayers' cash is spent more wisely and smartly. It's fantastic. It, it's incredible the courage of someone like Andrew. Uh, he never previously thought that he would actually stand as an MEP, but eventually he just said, I've got to put myself forward. I've got to take all the grief and the nonsense that comes with it because he just couldn't stand it any longer. And that's the same for all our candidates. You know, the bravery that they show, you know, because it does come with a bit of grief when you put your head above the parapet. Um, but please give a very warm welcome to Andrew Allison. Please welcome to the stage, Andrew Allison. Well, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Richard, and thank you for that great welcome. I'm, I'm very, very touched. Greetings from the East Riding of Yorkshire. I can assure you that we're as committed to Brexit in the East of Yorkshire as we are here in the West Riding. Yeah. We've just had a fantastic walk around in Pontefract this morning with Nigel. We've parked our tanks on a vet Cooper's lawn. Yeah. And along with other Ramonas. And along with other Ramonas, she should be very worried. They don't care about their constituents. They treat them with contempt. The Brexit Party is here to go after them, and we are not going away. Now, during the referendum campaign, March 2016 to be precise, the Education Secretary at the time was one Nicky Morgan. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> and she said that those who were considering voting leave in the referendum should think about their children and their grandchildren's future. Hey. Exactly. I was fuming at the time because my wife was pregnant and our son was born on the 19th of June, just four days before the referendum. And 
One of the reasons I was campaigning to vote to leave was because I was thinking about his future. His future as a citizen of a sovereign country outside the clutches of the anti-democratic protection racket that is the European Union. Now, I just want to share a little story with you, because in the wee small hours of the 24th of June, 2016, I had my five-day-old son in my arms. I'd just come back from the local count in Beverly, and David Dimbleby called it for leave. Now, I imagine that the champagne corks were popping, people were jumping up and down, hugging each other, punching their fists in the air. Well, I couldn't do that. I'd just got him to sleep, and there was no way was I going to wake him up <laughs> at all. But I did look at him, and I said to him, this is for you. And I promised him that I would continue to fight to make sure the Brexit was delivered. And that's one of the reasons why I'm standing here today. The political class in this country don't give a damn about democracy. They are trying to shut it down. Now, I want my son to grow up in a democratic, free society where we make our own laws, where we decide our own future and decide what's in the best interests of our great country. I voted to leave because I was sick and tired of our Parliament outsourcing this to unelected bureaucrats in Brussels. Yeah. Now, as, as Richard said, I never thought at the beginning of this year that I would be a candidate for the Brexit Party. But I did realise a couple of months ago that this is something I would have to consider. And I'm pleased that I did. Well done. Yeah. Well, thank you. Will Labour deliver Brexit? No. Will the Tories deliver Brexit? No. No, they want us to remain in the customs union and trapped in this Brexit in name only, half in, half out hell. And even the EU now wants us to be a colony, a colony of the EU. Well, I have news for them. The British people will never surrender. Never, never, never. So please make sure you go down to your polling station on the 23rd of May, put a cross next to the Brexit party, but tell your family and friends that's exactly what you're going to do. Urge them to do the same. You know, changing politics for good is our aspiration. With your help, it will become a reality. Thank you. It's fantastic to have people of Andrew's courage and knowledge as part of the Brexit party because we really can change politics for good. We're not messing around here. That is our aspiration. And we know that with hard work and with your help and support spreading the word, we can do it. And to our next speaker, someone who's had a number of sort of phases to her career. <laughs> she started, she warmed up with 23 years as a member of parliament for a party I won't mention because it didn't get a very good response first time. Um, but that really was just her warm-up phase. Uh, then she realised... She's seen the light. Then she saw the light and realised <laughs> that actually we needed some education about dancing. <laughs> so, so she became... She went on to strictly come dancing. And not content with that, because she's an absolute inspiration to us all, she then realised that actually her presence was needed on Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> but even that was just a warm-up for this, the biggest battle of her career. It's fantastic to have as a candidate uh, for the South West, actually, but here today speaking to us. Before we welcome Anne Widdicombe to the stage, let's just see her on the video on the screen. We are in a complete mess. We've got the worst Prime Minister since Anthony Eden. We've got the worst leader of the opposition in the entire history of the Labour Party. And we've got the worst Parliament since Oliver Cromwell. And with that combination, we are actually engaged in the most important international negotiations for 50 years. No, let me finish this sentence, Adam, then over to you. There's a growing disengagement between the people and Parliament. So what I want is an overwhelming, an overwhelming uh, Brexit victory on May the 23rd. That That's seen... what I want. Please welcome to the stage, Anne Whitaker. <laughs>
to ask you a few questions. Do you think that we can control our own laws and remain in the EU? Do you think we can control our own borders and remain in the EU? Do you think we can control our own trade and remain in the EU? And finally, do you think that we can be governed by our own democratically elected government and remain in the EU? No. Well, those four no's are the reason that Britain voted to leave. Yeah. And they are the answer to those patronising nincompoops who say, oh poor dears, they didn't know what they were voting for. We knew exactly what we were voting for. But what were they voting for? Money. They well, they were voting to give the EU money, certainly, but they were voting to keep Britain in servitude in the EU rather than letting their country become an independent sovereign state, which is what we fought so hard to be and what we will always be. And that is why we voted Brexit. Now, we've just heard Mr Verhofstadt say <laughs> that we are a colony. Oh, but just remember this about colonies. They have this little habit of rebelling. <laughs> just ask America. <laughs> So, he may think we're a colony, but in 2016 we decided that that was what we would no longer be. Yeah. And we were promised by politicians of both parties, by the way, they tell me today that we're in the Labour heartlands. <laughs> no, we're not. We're in the Brexit heartlands. <laughs> heartlands are going to grow and grow and grow until our country is one big Brexit heartland and that is our answer to the politicians who at Westminster believe that they know better than we do. Betrayed by both major political parties at Westminster, both of them. And you know what I really enjoyed during the local elections? It was the expression on Jeremy Corbyn's face as he realised that he wasn't going to benefit from all the fudge and that actually his own supporters were giving him the same message that former Tory supporters were giving the government, which was, we expect you to deliver. And so that was the moment when Theresa May really had her chance. When Labour realised that they too were in trouble, that was the moment when she could have said, come on Jeremy, we've simply got to do this. Instead of which, what did she say? Oh, do you want a customs union, Jeremy? Certainly. <laughs> oh, Jeremy, do you want us to be aligned to the single market? Certainly. <laughs> oh, Jeremy, you want us to bow to EU law? Just tell me how much law you want, Jeremy, and I'll give it. exactly the same 
in her negotiations with the EU, yeah. where it has been from the start to the finish, doormat diplomacy. Yeah. And she has just lain down yeah. and let Juncker walk all over her. Yeah. And then when he'd finished, she let Barnier walk all over her. <laughs> and then when he'd finished, it was the Hofstadt walking all over her. And so it went on. Now we know what we want. Yeah. What? <laughs> Nigel, what, what we want is a proper break from the European Union. And if we are not offered that break, if they do not let Britain leave, we will make them leave. <laughs> Short of this, Theresa May, a customs union is not leaving. Staying aligned to the single market is not leaving. Allowing them to dictate the terms of our trade deals is not leaving. And if any of those things happen, we will not be going away. Rather, we will simply say, right, if this lot can't do the job, then we will take over that job at the next general election. <laughs> this party has only been around for a few weeks, and already we have 34% of the opinion poll. This party has only been around for a few weeks and already they're predicting that we can take 49 seats in a general election. Well, think, think what can happen when we have been around for a few years. Our message to the politicians of Westminster is very clear. Either give us a Brexit, which is a Brexit, or just recognise your time is up. Isn't she great? She's a star, a real inspiration. I promised you she was just warming up, and I think you've just heard that. Phase three of a long career. Fantastic. Thank you, Anne. And so, ladies and gentlemen, to our next speaker. He's from the world of business. He's been involved in business across the UK, but also across Europe and the, uh, the Asia, America. So he's been involved in business all over the world. He knows that all of this scaremongering is complete and utter nonsense. It's fantastic, again, to have another businessman who's prepared to put his head above the parapet. Because it comes with a price. You know, your friends, people in the world of business say, what are you doing? But he just eventually said, enough's enough. I've got to sort this out. He's an expert in negotiation. I'd much rather have him in the negotiating room than some useless civil servant. Please give a very warm welcome to Jake Pugh. Please welcome to the stage. Jake Pugh. Hello. Um, I was just, before I came on, I was introduced to Chris and Sam at the back, and they said, follow that. <laughs> so, so, so where better than a working man's club to be talking about 
the importance of democracy. I'm standing before you and I'm standing in Yorkshire and the Humber because I believe democracy is more important than mine or anybody else's political views. Yeah. They talk about Westminster being the mother of parliaments, but in fact, were quite a young democracy. It was only in 1928 that all women over the age of 21 were allowed to vote. So for a lot of the people in this room, your mother was the first woman in your family who had the right to vote. Universal suffrage took centuries to win. In August, it's going to be the 200th anniversary of the Peterloo Massacre because the rich and the powerful did not want ordinary people to have a voice. It took centuries to get universal suffrage, but only a few short decades before politicians started taking away our, your, democratic rights. For 40 years, successive governments of left and right transferred away powers from Westminster to Brussels. They transferred to people we don't elect and we can't remove. And then in 2016, you know the story, after 40 years we were finally asked the question, are you happy with that arrangement or do you want it to change? And we were told by all the most senior politicians of the day, Cameron, Osborne, Clegg, Blair, Brown, Major, Heseltine, Mandel, every single one of them, all the ones who are part of the political system. And you were told two things. This is the biggest vote for generations and we'll respect what you say. And, and people listened because people take those sorts of warnings very clearly. So we then had, and it was proven that people listened, because we then had the biggest democratic vote in British political history. And we were then being told, and then we're told, no, you, you didn't quite listen, you, you didn't quite know what you were voting for, so we'll have to do it again. So, we demand the full repatriation of all those democratic rights back to the United Kingdom. But why? Because it is only through democracy that you hold the powerful to account. Whoever you are, rich, poor, old, young, those with advantages in life, privileges, those without a voice, you count the same as the richest, the most powerful, and the most connected. And that is the essence of our, of your, British democracy. So, on the 23rd of May, I ask you to put a cross in the box for myself and my other candidates in Yorkshire and the Humber. But as you do so, please also think about every woman in your family that never had the right to vote. But also, because we are the most open, tolerant, fantastic country, think of those we know who are less fortunate than ourselves and vote for them because it is for those people that we want to change politics for good. Thank you Jake, thank you. Just the sort of person we want against Barnier and Verhofstadt yeah. and those dreadful sort of people. And so to our next speaker.
She's had a varied career. She very nearly became a professional opera singer. She may or may not, you know, sort of sing today. But um, <laughs> she's also been a fishmonger for about five years. So she knows the real thing exactly. She knows the opportunities for the fishing industry in this country. But now she is, she's been passionate about the Eurosceptic cause. She's been campaigning for it for a couple of years really hard. She's been setting up groups all over the country. It's fantastic to have Lucy Harris here in the Yorkshire region as a candidate. Please give her a huge welcome to the stage, Lucy Harris. Please welcome to the stage, Lucy Harris. No, no, I am of the right age, sir, I can assure you, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. Uh, wow, so many of you here, and a bar. I see a bar. That's good. I like that. That's a good start. So, um, as Richard said, I've run a national campaign across the UK now, building social networks across the UK, trying to get people talking about Brexit, trying to keep the spirit of when you woke up that morning and we felt that we were going to leave. Do you remember it? Yeah. I remember it. My God, it was shocking. It was amazing. It was exciting. And that's why we have to keep it alive, which is why I've set up groups across the country where they can socialise, talk, have a drink, and just keep that conversation going. And I can see a few people in the crowd that are part of many of our groups in the room. So thanks, guys, for coming. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean... It, um, you know, I've been around. I've been around um, Yorkshire. We have groups in Scarborough. We've got groups in Leeds, um, and I've met so many of you. And I can tell you, you are fantastic characters. You've got so much to say, so many experiences, and so many histories. And it's been touching that you've let me in, and I've seen what Yorkshire is, and it's fantastic. So thanks for having me. Um, and this is a stark difference. All these inspirational people who are willing to move their butts to get stuff done. It's not like that down in Westminster. It is not. <laughs> it is a chronic, a chronic lack of belief in Britain and the British people. A lack of imagination, problem solving, or indeed faith in the British public and their vote to leave the EU. But not only this, ordinary voters have been stereotyped and malevolently misjudged as racist and stupid for having voted Brexit. It is a tactic to keep us quiet over a legitimate political stance. Now, I have been told from people across the country working in offices, schools, hospitals, that they haven't been allowed to go to meetings, or, in fact, they get insulted at workplaces, or even worse, that their friends and family do not speak to them anymore for having voted for Brexit. It is, there is a national fear of societal rejection for having voted for Brexit, and I don't like that. I feel that we should be able to express ourselves. I feel that we should be able to say what we want in, in, in respective of our political views. What I've learned from meeting all of you and going across the country is that we're all extraordinary people, especially here in Yorkshire. <laughs> yep. um, we're wanting a fair hearing. We're wanting to be understood, but above all, what I've seen is a hunger to make this happen. The skills, the drive, the encouragement, the vision. So many of us out there ready and willing to make Brexit work, to restore democracy, and demand politicians do what they say on the tin. Now, this is not about left or right. It is about right and wrong. And it is wrong to bully communities into accepting the EU's agenda. 
It is wrong to demonize ordinary people, indeed, the majority of people, for practicing their democratic rights. But above all, it is wrong to deny the most colossal democratic vote this country has ever seen. <laughs> the political class and Theresa May are attempting to prevent our chance for once to be heard, to be seen by not delivering Brexit. Indeed, just down the road, the local Labour MP, Yvette Cooper, so desperate to stop Brexit, she tore up the rules of Parliament. But the buck stops here. And this is your cue. You must be bold, put your head above the parapet, and stand up for democracy. I invite you to vote for the Brexit Party and change politics for good. Thank you, Lucy. She's a fantastic campaigner, a real advocate for Brexit. It's great to have her as a candidate. And so to our penultimate speaker today, slightly drawn the short straw uh, before Nigel, but uh, another person from the world of business, and again, been involved in business for decades in the UK and across the whole world. He knows what a huge opportunity Brexit is for our economy, for our businesses, small, medium and large. But he was brave enough also to say, I've got to do something about this. It's an outrage. I'm going to put my head above the parapet. He works in the software business. He knows about the opportunities. It's lovely, great to have him on board. Please give a huge welcome, Christopher Barker. Please welcome to the stage, Christopher Barker. Hello, good morning. I'm, I'm Christopher Barker. I'm, a, I'm an innovator. I'm a businessman. Look, I haven't been active in politics before this, so let me just share with you why I just came into it. You see, just the other side of Leeds from here, I was brought up believing in a fair and tolerant society where my vote's worth no more than yours, where those who govern us are no mightier than you or me, and where the laws that govern us can only be written by those we've elected who'll do what they promise and who we remain free to fire at the ballot box. But in recent years, that's not how our precious democracy's been run, is it? You know, 58% of us in Yorkshire and the Humber voted to leave the European Union. It was 66% in this area around Wakefield, and we haven't left. And out of our 21 voting regions, voting areas within <clears throat> Yorkshire and Humber, 18 voted to leave. And we haven't left. And our MPs, John Trickett and Yvette Cooper, they too voted in Parliament in December. Thank you. They too voted in Parliament in December 2016 that UK should leave the European Union. And again, to give the European Union notice we were leaving. All just in time to make us think that they were on the side of the good folk of Hemsworth and Normanton, Pontefract, Castleford, so that they could get re-elected. And then... They both voted that EU law should stay supreme over our own law, even after we'd left the EU. They both voted to keep us in the European single market. That same system of trading regulations we'd expressly been told we were leaving. And last year, they voted against us leaving the EU at all. In March just now, they voted that we mustn't leave the EU without first agreeing to a withdrawal deal. Do you know? Any competent negotiator can tell you that if you say to the other side, we won't walk away from this table without a deal, what you're saying is name your price for us to get out of here. Yeah. And, and guess what Monsieur Barnier has just done? And now just last month, 
They voted for a permanent, comprehensive customs union with the EU. In other words, a new treaty permanently preventing us from making our own trade deals except on Brussels terms. What kind of a free country would that be? Is that what you voted for when you put your tip? Leave the European Union? And our MEPs, perhaps. Both the recent Labour MEPs, once just stood down in Yorkshire and the Humber, campaigned against Brexit. All six Labour candidates in this European election in Yorkshire and the Humber are actively campaigning against Brexit. Yes, all six of them. I won't get what we did. <clears throat> and when we tell these cynical career politicians that they're not listening, what do they say? They arrogantly declare that if we really meant what we said in answer to the question they promised to follow through, we must be populist. Populist. Well, we say to them, when you stopped respecting the popular will, you just lost the right to represent us. We're coming to the ballot box and you lot, you're on your way out. Yeah. <clears throat> now, now, now look. Many of us are concerned that our community has been divided by the debate over Brexit. I feel it too. They're concerned we need to heal the divide. We do, I agree. But let us not be fooled. This deal that Monsieur Barnier has handed down to our government, this can't heal our divide because it fails to address the real problem. And the real problem is that our elected representatives aren't listening to the people who elected them. They won't respect you. Because the difference between us and our current politicians is that when we say Brexit means Brexit, we mean it. Yeah. And when we say no deal is better than a bad deal, do you know what? We mean it because it's true. And the difference between so many decent, hard-working, caring former Labour supporters and the party they have voted for before is that they too believe, with us in the Brexit party, that in a democracy worthy of the name, our legislators must do what they promised when we elected them. And that's why, that's why so many people from across our political spectrum today have been coming to the Brexit party in this remarkable shift for good and positivity in British politics. They're demanding competence from government in place of this elementary negotiating shambles we've had from this lot. They're demanding honesty from our politicians across the benches. And yes, that means from the next MP we elect. And they're demanding respect. They're demanding respect for the will of the people. They're demanding respect for you. And you know what? Starting at these elections on the 23rd of May, we're going to deliver it. And together... And together, we will change British politics for good. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Again, we're so lucky to have someone with his experience and his knowledge with that very simple mantra that we all know. No deal is always better than a bad deal. It's basic common sense. And yet, just a few weeks ago, the head of the civil service wrote to all the civil servants and said, stop no deal planning. That says it all, ladies and gentlemen, how incompetent, how useless they are, and how they don't understand basic negotiating tactics. That'll change. Our final speaker, really should be running the country. Yes. He's been, he's courageously fought to leave the European Union for over 25 years in the face of abuse, vitriol, the establishment, absurd interviews like yesterday morning on the Andrew Marr show. Unbelievable. But it just shows what we're up against, ladies and gentlemen. But we will prevail, we will win, it's fantastic to have Nigel, and let me tell you a secret. One of my jobs was to get him in training. And he's fitter than he's ever been, because he knows this is the biggest battle. And he is absolutely determined to win it. Before we welcome Nigel to the stage, let's just see him on the video. 
we have a parliament that is now completely out of touch with our country. I think politics is broken. Our task and our mission is to change politics for good. The Brexit Party has been formed because, very simply, the government and parliament do not wish to deliver Brexit. We are fighting back. The whole of our politics needs changing. The two-party system doesn't work anymore. If they thought we were going to give up, they've got another think coming. This country needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage. Nigel Farage. How are we doing? All right. Jeffrey Boycott tells me that this is God's own county. Is he right? Yes. Good. Well, let's have a big meeting. Thank you. Thank you to the Working Man's Club here for allowing us to put this meeting on today. We're very grateful. And I've got a message from the club, which is that the bar is open. Don't be shy when the meeting's over. All right? I might even come and join you for one. You never know. Do you know if I think, think we'll be... Thank you. Accepted. Accepted. <laughs> That's a good start, isn't it? You know, if you think about what's happened in this country over the course of the last three years, everything from that dramatic referendum, you remember the one? Yeah. The one where we were told that if we dared to vote, dared to vote to become an independent country, dared to vote to become a proper democratic nation, dared to vote to make our own laws, to choose our own relationships around the world, terrible things would happen to us. Remember that chance for the Exchequer, George Osborne? Taxes would go up. Half a million jobs would be lost. I mean, they were so desperate to get us to vote Remain, they even dragged over President Obama. <laughs> to tell America's oldest and best ally in the world that we go, do you remember, to the back of the queue? And we had much the same from nearly all of the Labour Party, that it would be a disaster, a catastrophe, and despite it all, we voted by a big, clear margin to take back control of our own country. We won! At least... At least we thought we'd won. <laughs> and in many ways, we had every reason to believe that we had. After all, that nice Mr. Cameron, remember him? Yeah. <laughs> sent a leaflet, didn't he, through every door in the country. And that leaflet said that we will respect the will of the people. Struck me that was a contract. I sent mine back. I sent mine back. I walked up Downing Street and put it back through his door. How about that? <laughs> I did. And then we had, of course, a general election a year later, in which the two big parties, although I've got a feeling they're not quite so big today, are they? <laughs> But the two big parties both promised us in their manifestos that they would honour the result of the Brexit referendum. And then, 498 MPs passed with a majority of 384 voted for Article 50. And what did it say? It said, we are leaving the European Union at 11pm on the 29th of March 2019 and here's the next bit because it went into law with 
or without a withdrawal agreement. And what has happened? Here we are today, and I can't think of a better constituency for the Brexit party to visit than here in Pontefract and Castle. But I can't think of a better one. Because 70% of you in that referendum voted to leave. And the next year, your Member of Parliament, Yvette Cooper, made a series of promises to you. She promised she would respect the vote and she boasted to you that she'd voted for Article 50. Yet despite all of that, I cannot think of a Member of Parliament who has done more in the last two years to stop us leaving the European Union and she now, she now all right there are some that might be worse so I give you that but not many and none in a constituency where 70% voted leave of all the constituencies in this country you have been betrayed worse than any other group of people And so much, so much of the conversation has been about the Conservative Party, about splits within the Conservative Party and indeed about the Prime Minister, who is without doubt <laughs> the worst Prime Minister we have had in my lifetime, yes. without doubt, but also I think the most dishonest one as well, yes. I, and I really do. You know, all this nonsense about Brexit means Brexit and we're taking back control of our laws, borders and money. They wind her up at the back in the morning, I think, to go out and say all of this. <laughs> <laughs> and then she presents what she calls her deal Surrender. to the House of Commons and it's not her deal. No. It's a document drafted by Monsieur Barnier yes. with Angela Merkel looking over his shoulder yes. and it's not a deal no. No. it's a new European treaty yes. and Barnier walks around with it leather bound under his arms calling it a treaty and yet in this country they dare not use the word the truth of it is the truth of it is that we're being asked to leave one European treaty, to sign up for another European treaty, which in some ways is perhaps even worse than the situation we are currently in. And that is why, that is why three times it's been rejected in the House of Commons. And of course we see the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, and a, a bunch of other insipids in the Cabinet. <laughs> who basically are all Remainers and want, to give us, and want to give us a Brexit that is simply Brexit in name only. But there is too little focus in this country about the role of the Labour Party. Corbyn may try to play this ambiguous game where he sits on the fence and pretends they respect Brexit but they want a Labour pro-jobs Brexit. But the truth of it, and you've heard it already from this platform, is that nearly every one of the Labour candidates who are standing for this European election are Remainers. Nearly all of them want a second referendum to overturn the first, but it's worse than that. It's worse than that because the Labour Deputy Tom Watson and now their shadow Brexit spokesman Sir Keir Starmer are now pushing, and it is Labour leading this, they are now pushing for what they call a confirmatory referendum. Doesn't that sound nice and soft and fluffy? A cop what earth, earth could be wrong with a confirmatory referendum? Well, I tell you what's wrong with it. The choice they want to give us, this is being pushed by the Labour Party, the choice they want to give us is to stay in the European Union on current terms or to accept the new treaty with the add-on of permanent membership 
of the customs union and effectively continued membership of the single market. That is the choice. That is the choice. That is the choice they want to put to the British people. They want to use a second referendum to deny us even having the opportunity of voting for a clean break Brexit and guess who was voted for this appalling formula? Yes, your Member of Parliament, Yvette Cooper. So that is where we are. Labour have done in many ways more to betray their own Brexit voters even than the Conservative Party have done and this is a message they need to get because here in the North, in the Midlands and in South Wales, traditionally areas that ever since 1918 have been Labour strongholds, they are letting down the five million of you that voted for Brexit. It is an Islington, North London Labour Party that I no longer think represents parts of the country like this. That's my feeling. So I thought to myself, as this betrayal got worse and worse, and particularly when I saw that Labour and the Conservatives now are working together in a coalition against the British people, I thought, what should we do? We've got two choices. One is that we give up. One is that we give up. One is that we roll over and say, we had our bit of fun, but let's just accept the fact we're going to stay part of an emerging United States of Europe with its developing army and all the rest of it. One option would be to give up. Never. But I thought to myself, I'll be damned Never. if I've spent 25 years fighting for us to be free and not to stand up. But you know, that's enough of the negativity. Let's now be positive. Because I know that together, if we put aside traditional differences of left and right, but focus on right and wrong, and by that I mean delivering the democratic will of the people, I believe by doing these things, not only can we win this, but we can actually radically transform the political landscape in this country. And we are fighting this on a very positive message. I'm going to share with you now the Brexit Party's party election broadcast. It's not yet been seen on television. You're one of the first groups of people to see it. Let's have a look. Some of the nose off. People gave their lives for the right to vote. To be able to change the things they didn't like. We thought our votes meant something. But we've been let down. We've been betrayed. Our country has been humiliated by politicians. Those who we trusted with our vote. We deserve so much better than this. Politics is broken and our democracy is under threat. Enough is enough. It's time to change politics for good. That's why I'm standing. That's why I am standing. I am standing. I am standing. That's why I'm leading the Brexit party in the European elections on May the 23rd. It's why I'm standing for the Brexit party. So my community isn't decimated by politicians who don't listen. And that's why I'm standing for the Brexit party. Because we deserve better. We deserve politicians we can trust and who deliver on their promises. There is a huge disconnect between the MPs and the people. We have all seen what can happen when people lose faith in democracy. MPs can no longer be trusted to represent the will of the people. They say we didn't know what we voted for. That we're stupid. That we're racist. But we're none of those things. We are ordinary people. Business people. We are brothers. Sisters. Fighters. We are doctors. Entrepreneurs. We are the 17.4 million people who voted to leave. And we deserve to be heard. We believe 
that without democracy, we have nothing. We all deserve to be heard, and in June 2016, 17.4 million of us voted to leave the European Union. And here we are, three years on, and nothing has been delivered. Our vote has been betrayed. This is about more than Brexit. It's about democracy, our country, how the rest of the world sees us. Our politics is broken and it's time we did something about it. The Brexit Party is about change. You can do something with your vote. Vote for the Brexit Party and change politics for good. Vote for the Brexit Party on May the 23rd and let's change politics for good. I hope that you agree with me that our message is positive and it's uplifting. Our message is that we can do so much better as a nation. Our message is that democracy forms the bedrock of our society and without it we will be diminished as a people, diminished as a nation. Our message is that no longer are we prepared to see our great nation humiliated in front of the rest of the world. It's time we stood up, stood tall, proud of who we are and able to start forging our own fresh relationships around the world. And we believe in this party that the 2.4 billion people that live within the Commonwealth would be a very good place for us to start. We really, really do. And this is, this is about so much more than Brexit now. It's about democracy. It's about trust. It's about the bond that needs to exist between those that govern us and the rest of us for this to continue to be a civilised and peaceful society. And it's also about competence. It's about a group of career politicians who've never done a deal in their lives going into this negotiation being outwitted and outfoxed at every turn. And part of the offering that we have to you from the Brexit Party is we've got men and women who've had successful careers in business. They'd make a damn sight better job getting this country ready for its independence. But it's also, in the longer term, about a two-party system that doesn't work anymore. A two-party system where our politics is broken. A two-party system that now appears to serve nothing but itself. We need fundamental, radical change and transformation in the way we do politics in this country. Never again, never ever again, can a great democratic exercise by the people be betrayed by the will of Parliament and we're going to fight on through May the 23rd and on to make this a better, more democratic nation. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, a bit of a squeeze, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you. I did promise you that he was just warming up. He is back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are going to win. Now, we've just got time for a few questions, and just to give Nigel a breather, I've got a question here for Anne from Pat from Normanton. And do you agree that civil servants have too much influence in Parliament? Well, yes, but the job of the civil servant is to serve the government of the day. That is the job. And the job of a civil servant is to do what he is told to do by the government, not what he thinks it might be a good thing to do. But under Theresa May, her own Brexit ministers have been ignored in favour of Ollie Robbins, who's never been elected to do anything. So, of course, uh, civil servants who start to implement their own agenda uh, are actually uh, having a bad effect on the democratic process. And we should all be aware it's not just civil servants, it's political advisers as well that Mrs May is far too dependent on. And maybe if she listened to those who were elected,
her own Brexit ministers, she might actually have done rather better. Ollie Robin says he wants to go and live in Belgium. Good, they're welcome to him. <laughs> It did indeed, it did indeed. And what is absolutely clear with Anne is you always know where you stand. No nonsense. Um, a question. We can still have a bit of fun, can't we? And what better place than a working man's club to ask Nigel, what's your favourite beer? Wow. Well, the truth of it is, I do like a pint, and, I, and I've got a free one coming in a minute, and that's a very good one, isn't it? I've, um, actually, as uh, the chairman said earlier, um, although I'm quite well known for liking a pint, and indeed I've never, ever been photographed in public without one, uh, the truth of it is that uh, this is by far the biggest and most important campaign that I've ever fought. In fact, I feel we as a country, politically, have ever fought. And as a result of that, I'm almost completely a reform character. And so I'm pretty much off the beer, I'm afraid. But I'll be back on it when we leave the European Union. We'll believe you, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> um, a question for Anne. Um, Mike from Bradford. What options will be available if the Prime Minister and Jeremy Corbyn come up with a dodgy deal? Well, first of all, they're very likely to come up with a dodgy deal uh, because neither shows any sign of actually wanting to deliver a straightforward Brexit. So the first thing is it's quite likely to happen. Uh, and if that happens, then, as I said earlier, we will not have left the European Union. And if we don't leave the European Union, then the Brexit party is not going to go away. We're going to fight the next general election and we're going to sweep the traitors out of Westminster. Wow. Which, which very neatly brings me on to the last question from Alison from York for Nigel. So if we go to a general election, will you put forward sensible policies to prevent people from voting for Labour or the Tories? Yeah, look, we will. And I've been asked about this again and again and again about domestic policy. And my answer is very simple. Next Thursday, we are fighting a European election just three years after we voted for Brexit. So let's talk about European issues. Let's talk about democracy. Let's talk about what's happened to the will of the people. Thereafter, of course, we're going to put a full slate of policies up before the British public, political reform, more help for the regions, scrapping of ludicrous projects like HS2 is just a hint. Wow. That's popular. Oh, wow. I don't need to do any market research on that policy then, do I? <laughs> and we will put up a full slate of policies. But you know what? I'll never call it a manifesto, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. That word manifesto, in my mind, now equates with lie. Because that's what we've had from Labour and Tory for years. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Now, it's really important that we just remember. What do we believe in? Brexit. Brexit. When do we want it? Yeah. Now. So let's have you all on your feet. Lift up your placards. We haven't got one. Oh, we have. I'll share one with you. I'll share one. I have now. Yeah. <laughs> and let's make a big noise that they hear down in Westminster. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. Thank you very much indeed. Have a very good afternoon. Thank you for coming. <laughs>